Colonel. Yeah! So how'd you find out about this place? I've been hanging around the saloon in Rhodes a bit. Rhodes? Yeah, the, the barkeep there gossips like a fishwife. And a couple of times he's mentioned how this rancher's a fall-down drunk these days. Sounds like he don't know his ass from his armpit half the time. <laughs> you sure you ought to be hanging around Rhodes after everything that happened? What do you mean? I mean, that it ain't gonna do your health no good if they find out you ride with us. Nah! Fine. I was never there at the same time as you boys. And they'd never reckon on a distinguished old fella like me running with a bunch of reprobates. Well, just be careful. Yep. How old are you, anyway? Well, let's just say I was born sometime between the fall of 49 and the fall of Rome. <laughs> and my second wife always used to describe me as ageless, though she did leave me for a younger man. Hmm. Well, maybe we should cut you open. Count the rings of whiskey. Now I'm ready for my retirement, though. <laughs> Let me tell you. You've been pretty much retired from the moment I met you. I mean the tropics, you know, the real deal. What the Dutch is talking about. That's why I jumped on this opportunity. The sooner we get enough money to leave, the better. Dancing girls with flowers in their hair, warm sand, cold beer. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna see out my days. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. We're gonna it. cut up this way. All right, let's get up there on foot from here. Don't want the horses clopping around outside the window. Come on, let's take a closer look. Look over there. The hell? Who are these clowns? I don't know. This is the first time I ever seen anyone else here. Let's sneak up closer. What? Where the hell are you going? I think I got a plan. Hurry up. I'm doing the best I can. So shut up. Hurry up and be quiet. Ow. You said he was a drunkard. You said that, that we could play the fiddle and we wouldn't wake him. I was talking in a metaphor. Now hurry up. Oh, what's a metaphor? <laughs> you're a jackass. That's a metaphor. Well, you're a son of a bitch. Well, that ain't one. Now, now, now get back to looking out. And shut up. So, what now? I thought you had a plan. Well, I ain't so sure now. Christ, I'll take care of him. You hear that? It ain't nothing. Oh, I heard something. Hurry up. How can I hear anything with all your speaking? You are gonna wake him up. Oh, oh, I... Move in. Well, come on, you, you better break the padlock. My lock-picking skills ain't what they used to be. What a surprise. That was loud. Yeah, well, we ain't got time. You said he ain't gonna wake up, and we ain't seen him yet. I'll get him out, right up next to the house to keep him from running off on us. I'll move it up. Keep moving. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Move. Go, go. Let's go.
What the? What the hell? I'm being robbed! Damn you, goddamn robbers! <laughs> he knocked himself out! <laughs> Hey there. What you got? Cattle. Well, I can see that. Whose cattle? Yours now, if the price is right. Well, I can give you uh, hmm. 50 bucks. Okay. 50 bucks each times uh, 20 cattle. No, no, 50 total. <laughs> this is old Squeer's cattle. He knows me. I can't do better than that. I'll have to move them right away. We'll take 200, friend. But I got costs. Mm. 150. 75 and not a dollar more. 100. And I don't shoot you. <laughs> so menacing. Clyde, pay your friend here. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> Bye now. Be careful out there. This is nasty country. Hey, don't forget to put some in the pot. Oh, of course. <laughs> like I told you, easy. Sure, I guess. I'm headed home. You coming? Nah, I'll see you later. Thanks for the help with this, Arthur. Oh, my girl.
sir. If you're waiting well. for the next... until you get this right. I can't, Daddy, please. Let him in. He's been trying for hours. He ain't no kind of man till he can get on a horse. <gasps> You're here for your bounty. <gasps> Come to Mama, boy. Don't shoot. I'm an arm. We knew you was coming. I got something to ask. I'm a chain. Leave my daddy alone. Billy, leave it. Just wanted to say goodbye. Boy, you're the man now. You can't be soft no more. Just you real quiet back there. Most captured men, they beg or they cry or they rail against fate. That's none of a bitch. Come back. Oh no, you don't. Damn you. Shit. I don't want to hang. This time. How's that? Here we go. <laughs> I 
Now what was the point in all that? Could have got your neck broke. Prematurely. No more games, all right? Mark Johnson. You can only run so long, son. There's your cell. You're lucky it's not a grave. I was out in the bayou. Wasn't hurting no one. Your past ah. catches up with you. the price for Johnson. I didn't take it someone else would have. Tell yourself that, Rowdy Hunter. You ain't whiter than white. I hope your past catches up with you. I swear I'm a good man now, Sheriff. I got a son. Okay, there. Well, well, girl.
Jose. Hey, Arthur. Come on! If we're gonna make it to this party, we yeah. sure as shit better clean up a little. So we're doing this? Oh, yeah. Old friend Dutch Van der Linde's finally showing his true colors. Social climbing. <laughs> Old Senor Bronte, that horrendous snake, has invited us to the ball, Cinderella. So my suggestion is we go and get you a gown. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Ridiculous. <laughs> Utterly. I ain't never been to a ball in my life. Nor have I, if I am being honest. I used to quite often. There could be fine pickets. Oh, no, 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 no pickpocketing. We are here to make real contact. What kind of contact? Well, I don't know. We'll find what we can. All I know for sure is we are going to a party at the mayor's house, and the guest of honor is the worst crook in town. <laughs> I am sure that we will find something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, Luca, I'm afraid the mayor does not allow guns at official functions after last year's incident. Luca here will take you to Mr. Bronte. I believe he is expecting you. Follow me, gentlemen. Senior Bronte will be so pleased that you made it. We are honored to be here. Ah, that's wonderful, wonderful. That. Come down this way. Uh, what a beautiful evening it shall be. Mr. Bronte is a very good friend with the mayor. Good evening, Pierre. Senor Napoli? As long as the mayor behaves himself, you know. Mr. Bronte, he has a, the thing, you know. A respect. Jose, Bill, you join the party. We'll meet you out back after we pay our respects to send you a Bronte. Gunga? We'll meet you out in the balcony when you're done. And you've washed for the prima volta questo mese, senza dubbio. Oh, <laughs> this is quite a party you've invited us to. Yes, quite something. Although I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> so, this is saint High Society. Yes, apparently so. And all these people, these are friends of yours, <laughs> Senor Bronte? No, 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 not quite, not quite. But they certainly are afraid of me. Like that one. See that wretch? He's the mayor. <laughs> Henri Lemieux. <laughs> He'll do anything for a dollar, and I mean anything. <laughs> Politics is a foul business. Yes. Oh, and that one too. That is Alberto Fuzar. He owns a sugar plantation out on the island, and he comes here to whore and despoil himself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, and that, that is Hobart Crowley, a, a Confederate major in the war. I mean, hero, they say, but that, this is his very young wife. I mean, a young mistress, that's the natural order of things, yes, but a young wife is unseemly. Oh, oh, the Redskins. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them, because whoever is stupid enough to get tricked by the Americans, no, they get what they deserve, huh? <laughs> yes, and a letter to the mayor. Oh, yeah, that'll save you. <laughs> and that... That is Hector Fellows, this self-righteous newspaper man. Maybe, maybe you will kill him for me one day. <laughs> well, we're not paid killers as such, not in cold blood anyway. I did not know you were so particular that uh, you wouldn't help a friend. Oh, I'm willing to help in any way I can, uh, within reason. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to understand what that means. I meant no offense, sir. I'm not taken. None taken! <laughs> <laughs> All these vulgar people. 
They hate me. <laughs> non vedo l'ora di guardarti morire. <laughs> well, uh, it has been wonderful conversing with you, but I can tell that you are very busy and I won't waste any more of your time. Yes, yes, yes. Go, enjoy yourselves and mingle with this vulgar scum. It'll make you long for the days when you could shoot each other and screw cows out on the open range. <laughs> Those sure were the days. Good day, gentlemen. Mm, good day to you. But before you go, what uh, exactly are your plans here? Well, we've not made any... Well... We, we are going to need some money. Money, yes, of course. Well, there's, there's money at the trolley station. They keep a lot of cash there in the day. Now, I could not involve myself in such uh, matters. But you... Pff, as a guest, yes. As my guest, bah, do it, huh? <laughs> okay, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, ragazzi, adesso il vino buono. Sì. <laughs> I'll show you to the party, gentlemen, if you'll kindly follow me. Gentlemen, enjoy your evening and welcome once again to Santa Luz. Ciao, ciao. Gentlemen, let's go ingratiate ourselves. Good evening, mister. Okay. Go find the mayor if you can and stay out of trouble and steal nothing unless it's information. Of course. Jose, you go find us some place to rob. Bill, go make us some new friends. I'm Get me a bloody drink, will you? Chip? A small one. Just big enough for me to swim lengths in, you know? Chardonnay. He is a two-bit charmer. Only the most foolish of women would fall for his nonsense. Oh, that's quite unfair. I found it. Would you like some champagne? Of course. Thank you, sir. You are quite the gentleman. Clearly not from this swampy hair. Thank you. Thank you. This morning. I, I, I need to go. You're walking away from history, you fool. Women and men go to the Camilla McClare, wherever did you get that one? Terry. How's the show? I heard you went. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Mostly I fail, but I try. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wasp, he's the finest millionaire in the state and quite the most interesting purveyor of the exotic. But don't tell anyone, sir. The women here are all desperate to know. Can I help you, sir? Well, I'm not quite sure yet. Albert Daniels and Brent Tilden. This is my... Oh, would you like tickets? What? 
this cabaret show at the Theater Renoir. Gentlemen, uh, I hope you're having a fine evening. Ah, uh, Mr. Mayor, wonderful to see you again. I knew this intellectual here was just insulting me regarding the Redskins. I did no such thing. <laughs> Mr. Lemieux, I suggested that all of us, as Americans, had a duty to take care of the people living in this land. And that extends to Saint Denis. But, Mr. Miller, the Indian problem is not an urban problem, but a rural problem. And here in Saint Denis, we have problems of our own. I beg to differ, sir. It is not a rural problem, but a human problem. An American problem. Bonjour, monsieur. Oh. I'm an American. I mean, did you hear what that man said? Inferior. Hello, Do you sir? think women should have the vote? Oh, I don't care. I've never voted anyone. Well, that's no better. Anyone. If you'll excuse me, I'm curious about us. Much harder. What would you like me to do? Hit the mayor myself? Impudence. I see you still got that. But it takes more than a steady line and insults to succeed What's in, in your business. head? At least in my... What is wrong with you? Good evening. So hard these days to find men of true morals, especially in journalism. Indeed, it is. And you certainly won't find many here. How do you think they got so rich? Well, anyway, enjoy your evening. Well, have you considered? Did your mother never teach you how rude it is to stare? I need a big bank, sir. It ain't complex, and you. And only an idiot like you, buddy, would try to make it so. I will not deny idiocy, sir, but perhaps now is not the time. <laughs> Typical pansy! You are drunk, Ferdinand. I'm not drunk, you fool. But this man, this man loves darkies. Hey, <laughs> you are pretty drunk. Yeah. I'll say you and me cool off. Me. Come on, sleep it off. Sit down and calm down. Count to a thousand. You can rejoin the party. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Henri Lemieux. I hope you're enjoying my party. The mayor. Allegedly. There's quite a place you got here. <laughs> it's not mine, and the city is horribly in debt, but we can still put on a good show. Do you know Evelyn Miller? My lord. The writer? 
We seem to have another deranged drunkard on our hands. Shall we? My lord, they're fantastic. Mr. Cornwall was quite insistent, I'm afraid. Uh, he shouted down the telephone for several minutes. Mr. Cornwall is a horse's ass, and a bad horse. I'm very sorry, sir. Well, it's not your fault. I'm a fool for trusting him. I'll come in and sign it in a minute. Let me enjoy the fireworks. Of course. Please say something about Cornwall. Yes. Find out what. Sure. Everything taken care of? The telephone, it keeps ringing. The mayor said he will sign later. <gasps> Marie! Marie! Find that little reprobate chip and beat him! I will not have standard slip in this house! Have you lost your mind? I said, have you lost your mind? Come here. Come here. Look at me. Look at me. Who do you think you are? This area is not meant for the likes of you. You know this. The standards in this house are slipping. This is a final warning to you, miss. A final warning. Get out of my sight! Mr. Leviticus Cornwall. Top secret. Extremely confidential. Very interesting.
Arthur. This town is a waste of time. Maybe not. Arthur? Gentlemen, I think we're done here. What did you find now? There's plenty of money moves through here, of course, man. I think I found out how we can grab some of it. A big bank. Real one, I mean. But not yet. A city bank? Maybe. And a stuffed one. If we're gonna leave, that could be the one thing we need. There's also that trolley car station Senor Bronte told us about, and I heard about a high-stakes poker game. Come on. Here comes Lenny. All right. Let's get in. <coughs> Go home! Oh, I ain't never felt so awkward in all my life. All them folk all so pleased with themselves. Oh, high society's pigeon shit. If you ask me, it's more like torture. Well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? Let the people torture themselves. Here's them papers I took. <sighs> Let me see you take this. I don't think so. Hmm. I might have an idea. Let me think on it. <laughs> Interesting times. <laughs> I guess. So what's next? Dancing lessons? Deportment? More along the lines of armed robbery. Jose is handling reconnaissance on the bank. He and Abigail are gonna run some distractions, see how the law reacts. Good. Oh, and I spoke to Evelyn Miller, fine man, here helping the Indian chief we saw. Yeah, I met him too, with the mayor. He's lobbying officials in San Denis on their behalf. Maybe we could help. Maybe. Now, I think there's a lot of money on the riverboat. A lot of money. And Trelawney, he's investigating for us. He says to meet him at the tailors. Okay. One big score down here, Arthur, and we disappear. We are almost heading home. And where is home? I don't know. Exactly. But I can smell it. I'm gonna go investigate this trolley thing old Bronte was talking about. Okay. <clears throat>
about right, I, I, I think. I mean, we'll, be like a half, right? <sighs> we'll be famous for this one. Well, it's about damn time. We've been playing Whoa! With... Hey, why don't you walk along and forget what you saw, okay? All right. Guess I'll just listen for the explosion. Hey, we said scram. Good move. Not a good plan, boys. Serves him right. Spend it in your honor, boys. Get away from me, damn you! How are you today? I'm willing enough. Look out! For one moment, please. Hey. This is extremely delicate. There. Oh, wonderful! Algernon Wasp, purveyor of the exotic and the exquisite. Enchanté. Uh, Tacitus Kilgore. How can I help you? May I interest you in a, uh, hat? Perhaps? Yeah. How about a nymph? 
I import them from Brussels. The idiots in this town all want Italian nymphs, but the Italians make the coarsest of marble. I mean, quite frankly, the Baroque is an abomination. Belgium. Now that is a land for the connoisseur. Oh, yes. Yeah, as I always say. But, you know, I'm not really a nymph kind of man. No, oh, of course, too ephemeral. You want something, uh, more tangible, more gothic. I also make corsets. Would you like a corset? I always wear one. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, I ride a lot of horses. Um, the whalebone might stick in. Mm, well, a cup of tea. Uh, sure. And what is it you do, Mr. Kilgore? Are you a gentleman of leisure? An aesthete? <gasps> an artist. Uh, I suppose I'm <clears throat> kind of an adventure. Ha! Huh. Yes, of course you are. Here, be careful with the china. Sir, it is French. Not Belgian? No, no, no. no. They are Philistines in that area not to be trusted. Youth, eternally preserved in marble, is more their specialty. I fear China will always elude them. Now, why are you here exactly? I don't know. You're an adventurer, a wanderer, a lost soul cast out from heaven? <sighs> sure. Well, I do pay exceptionally well for certain objects needed for my art. Mm, you do? I do. Exceptionally well. Well, what do you need? Let's see. Right now, I have a couple of commissions. I need at least 15 egret plumes. Good ones, obviously. I also need 15 assorted orchids. Here's a list. Okay. I will see what I can do. Thanks for the tea. Thank you, Tacitus. It'll be very worth your while. Je vous salue. Come on, girl. Out of the damn way. Yeah. 